All right, guys, let's begin. So this is going to be a PC building YouTube video. That basis is a recap of what I did on stream when I'm building this PC. This PC will be for me. And it's basically an upgrade from what I have currently. Currently, I have a i7 4th gen CPU, which is like four cores. It's not bad, but it's definitely outdated for sure because a lot of stuff is limited because of how outdated it is. And I'm just upgrading this after about seven years seven or eight years and yeah it's a nice upgrade so first off we're gonna start with the motherboard motherboard is basically the body of the computer i have the z690 gaming x gaming x is just like the rgb version because the motherboard lights up a little bit on the side pretty cool and when you're thinking about a motherboard you always want to pair it up with the cpu the reason why i got the z690 is because it's compatible with the current 12th gen CPUs and that's really important to think about when you're getting motherboards first of all you think about the features that it provides and then if is it compatible what I recommend is for you to go into PC part picker just to get your parts uh, it does a really good job at you know seeing which parts is compatible with each other you don't have to think about it much and you don't have to do as much research just you know stuff about the computer because the PC part picker, as long as you pick the recommended parts, it should all fit together. If the case can, you know, have enough space. Alright, this is going to be my motherboard. It's going to have multiple angles, so you can see all the views. You can see the physical details and all the components. If you want to know more about it, just do more research. Know what it does. It's really important when you know these parts if you're building a PC because... You need to know where to put them, right? Anyways, this is going to be basically the body. I'm going to attach everything onto here, basically. As mentioned earlier, I have the 12th gen CPU. This one is an i7. i7 is pretty solid when it comes to budget-wise. Not really. It's not budget. It's just more like performance on a more performance-wise. If you are looking for budget, you probably going to want to go for an i3 or an i5. Those aren't bad at all. A lot of people think it's i3 and i5s are bad. As long as they are in the current gen, they are pretty solid when it comes to budget gaming. The only difference between i5 and i7 is the amount of cores it has and the number of cores basically affects the performance. But for the most part, you don't need to worry about it. Whatever your budget can hold, just put it. Also, when you think about your budget, you also want to put half of your budget into your graphics card. A general rule of thumb, maybe maybe a little bit less than 50% on your graphics card, but most of your performance when it comes to gaming is going to be from your graphics card. Your CPU and motherboard also matters, but for the most part, it's the graphics card. So now I'm going to be showing you how to basically install the CPU. Sorry for the bad footage, and also I didn't want to basically put the CPU in while I'm holding the camera on one side. I don't have the budget to have camera set up so close, so unlucky, unfortunate. But for the most part, when you're installing a CPU, you want to double check everything. There's a um, arrow that shows on the CPU that you know you can line up and stuff, so you don't mess anything up. For the most part, or put it in correct incorrectly. Um, for the most part, just double check on those. You can search online and watch other YouTube videos that can show you a better high res resolution of what it actually looks like. So, you know, check out the other videos. I'm just going to be showing how I built mine. And yeah. For a general rule of thumb, you want to double check everything before you put in the CPU. And just put it in and just call it. Alright, moving on to the storage. So for the most part, people use M.2 these days. M.2 is basically just screw-in storage. You don't have to worry about the SATA cables or whatever. Basically wires that basically transfer data over. It's You have to do a lot more. You have to like set up how it looks and cable manage and all that stuff. Nowadays, it's very simple. You just chug it in and then screw it and you have to drive. So I currently have the Samsung 980, 970 and also the Samsung 8, 980 Pro this is like Gen 3 and Gen 4 which is like fast M.2 and 
you have those thermal pads and it basically just keeps the heat for the most part. All right, moving on towards the case. The case is basically really important when it comes to like putting all your components together, but it should not, should not take the majority of your budget. It should only take less than 10% at most. So you really don't want to spend more than, you know, 10% of your budget on the case. But, you know, the case provides a lot of features and it's what people are going to be looking at, you know, like the exterior and all everything. So for the main part, when you're looking at case, you want to look at for its size. This one is the 4000 Corsair 4000D with airflow. It basically has decent airflow. It's solid as a glass panel, as filters. Also, the size of the case is really important. You want to consider that when you're building. Does it fit in your desk and does it fit all your components? All right, moving on to the RAM. RAM is really important when it comes to gaming or streaming because you're holding a lot of current temporary memory and a lot of applications that are really advanced nowadays use a lot of RAM. For the most part, you don't need any more than 32. I think th more than 32 is just too much. 16 is solid for just straight up gaming, but 32 is good for if you're a content creator or you're looking to stream or you just want that 32. For the most part, you'll never need more than 32. Some people might need more than 32 if they're doing a lot of heavy duty work when it comes to like maybe, you know, like holding a lot of, you know, a lot of editing and stuff. Maybe you require more RAM, but for the most part, for most of you, you probably only need 32 max. When I thought about the RAM, I was thinking about the speed and all that stuff so currently 3200 is pretty good the new ddr5 is coming out but it's really expensive and these z690 motherboards are capable of ddr5 if you order them with ddr5 i'm ordering it with ddr4 because ddr5 is just so expensive now because it's still new and there's not much being produced so definitely gonna stick to ddr4 for now if you're looking for RGB on your RAM, it might raise the price for about, you know, 20 to $30, depending on how good the RGB is. Sometimes it might cost even the same. But when you're looking at RGB, you just want to look at the ones that have, you know, lights on top because you're not going to see on the sides, really. So really important. I really like the Corsair Avengers Pro. It displays all the lights. And when you're buying your RAM, you want to look for the speed, but also how much storage it contains. For the most part, it's 2x8s. I currently have 2x16s, which means I want to be using two slots and I'm going to have more left. All right, after you get your RAM set up, you should probably move on to plugging your wires in and everything. For the most part, I made a mistake on mine by putting in my on one liquid cooler before I do all of this like installation stuff but installing the fans and stuff is better because some of the pins that are required to power these things might if you don't have a fan controller you might have to you know like you know you have to basically you know find a place to plug it in and these AIO like the radiator especially it can block one of those power ports which might be a issue because some of the boards they don't provide as much and you, you're just gonna have to like unscrew it all and then install i took a lot of time to just like do that so lesson learned probably install the liquid cooler last because it just takes up so much space and it just basically negates one side also install the power supply and connect stuff together because after i after I connected the on one liquid cooler, you can't like push the power supply in. So it just blocked a lot of stuff. So lesson learned, keep in mind, do liquid cooler last, do all the wiring and cabling first. So you get all that all that all that out of the way and plugged in and all set before you do the cooler where it blocks like I would say twenty five percent of your you know space and it's gonna be really hard to work around it and when you're looking at these wires when you're plugging into your case always look at the manual especially 
the motherboard manual and also the case manual. Most of the time you want to just look at the motherboard manual, the case manual it doesn't really help that much, but it shows you your F panel. F panel is that thing where it shows you your LEDs for your case, your, you know, what the power, if the power button works or not, just any general rule stuff that you need for the basically motherboard. Also, you can learn a lot of stuff such as clear moss or BIOS flashback, which are features that might save you a lot of you know headaches in the long term when you're like running into issues when you're building a new PC and you don't know what to do. Also, when you're installing Windows, remember to have a flash drive or you know a product key if you buy one of those. Uh, they cost 100 if you buy them legitimately. Or you can buy them off third-party websites for way cheaper. I would probably recommend that. Or you can just like download a free version of Windows and just plug it in, install Windows. And even though it has a watermark, it's not really that big of an issue. You can still do normal stuff on your computer with it. It's just that watermark gets in the way. And enough rambling. Overall, this is basically me just gonna be wiring stuff down and yeah that's i guess i guess we move on to the all right last but not least this is basically the hardest part of your build for the most part it's gonna take a lot of work just to you know have it set up but your cooler is really important you have to set up your brackets and stuff for the most part just read the instructions just remember to read the instructions and watch youtube videos really important to learn that stuff I'm applying the thermal paste. General rule of thumb, you don't want to apply too much. I kind of put a little bit too much. And if you do put a little too much, try to spread it out as evenly as possible. But don't put any on the side because once you push that thing in, it's going to spread out. So never put it on the side. And when you're using thermal paste, don't don't try to like lift it up and check if it like you know fully fills. And then also when you screw stuff in, just don't screw it in too tight. You don't need to. Just screw it in so it's on there. You don't want to like put too much pressure and you know like jam it in there and just like have it so you can't ever take it out when you may maybe fix your computer or you know upgrade it. Don't don't make it hard on yourself, all right? Just screw it in until it's enough. If it it's getting hard. Like harder to screw in than to stop. That's a general rule of thumb. And when you're doing the liquid cooler, you can do it in two ways. So the pump should be, you know, how it's designed, where it's facing the 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 thing the radiator on top should be on above the motherboard. When you're placing your your case upright, it should be on top. So. For the general part, you want to do that just because it's just affected that way. It's, it was designed that way for the most part. And yeah, that's a pretty cool display of my thing. And this one has RGB on the fans, not RGB on the actual pump head. A lot of Corsair products have RGB on the pump heads. Also, NZXT has some like cool features on their pump heads. If you want to do that, I'm not really a big RGB guy. I'm just trying out RGB for the first time. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the most part. This is me installing the radiator. It's just, you know, screwing in for the most part. For this case, it is it just varies by case. But for this case, I'm screwing in on the rectangle. And I'm not screwing all the way so I can adjust it any way I want. And I'm, I'm, after I know what a good spot is, then I can just screw everything in super tight. But you don't have to screw in that tight. All right, this is me booting it for the first time. The general rule of thumb, if you know your computer works, is if everything is, the fans are spinning, you're probably good to go. And if you are having any issues with the fan running, it's probably mostly your power source. You might be not be plugging it correctly and maybe like you know just double check on everything especially your power source that's mostly the point of failure like the point of like mistake that most people make 
they may maybe forgot to put in a power supply somewhere that that you need power and if the fans are working 90% of the time it's going to be working 100 like fully for the most part you need to plug this into the monitor just to check with the keyboard or a mouse just you know just to check if it works and once you get that going you can install windows do whatever you want and there's your computer boom hey there this is gonna be basically a brief overview of what i did after the stream i just basically screwed everything together got basically made it all packed up and all cleaned up pretty much so you can see my full display this is basically everything without the graphics card the reason why i don't have the graphics card is because i'm using it for currently editing this video so yeah my old computer basically just has everything right now it has all the software i need to edit the video and also it has the footages basically the raw footages that i got from stream which is really good for compiling stuff together you can see these fans only one of them is powered because only one is connected to the led i'll be getting a rgb header which connects multiple fans together and they're going to power it all up and they're going to be matching with the radio on top you can see it's all white for now we can adjust the color later but let's look at the build overall so under here we have the i7 1200k this is the newest 12th gen i7 cpu it's really powerful 12 cores insane i really would recommend it and yeah that's pretty much it for the cpu Moving on is the on one liquid cooler. This one is on one because it can basically, it's really easy to install. All you do is just put it, put a mount on, which is basically kind of the hardest part because you have to build it. And you just put it on, screw it on, boom, it has everything. It has a radiator, and then you can see the pump. Next up, we got the RAM. This RAM is really important when you, it's basically quick memory. So when you're playing games or you're streaming, you're holding that quick memory over so you really need a lot of ram if you are a streamer a video editor or any like content creator in general you normally the maximum you should get is 32 you don't need more than 32 i currently have 32 so far if i need 64 which i probably will never i can add two more just in case now the things i'm pointing at is basically the storage normally storage in the I think old days they are like you know wired but nowadays they're screwed in these are called m.2 m.2 is screwed in they're really easy to install you don't have to worry about all that wire management stuff it's a little bit more complicated if you have to worry about the old sata drives but this one's really easy they're covered by basically heat thermals which basically cools them down so they don't overheat under here is the power supply i don't know why i bought 1050 you would probably never ever reach that number but if you do you're probably using a 3090 dti at max power for some reason and you're like overclocking your cpu and everything and full out you know rgb that's the only way you can ever reach a thousand maybe but i just bought it because i was crazy that day but yeah had to do some my wire management to fit that thing in and you can see these rgb fans as i mentioned earlier they are plugged in i can remove them like that so and yeah the rgb headers will come in about a few days and i can probably connect them together now with talking about the case overall we are looking at the fan the other fan that fan is the exhaust fan so it blows out air this one is basically comes with the case it doesn't have rgb though unlucky and here's the case in the back you can see that the wire management is pretty decent it's not finished yet i'm waiting to put my graphics card before i finalize everything but yeah looking good those are for unplugging in the rgb headers later those are basically the rgb stuff for the fans all the power is connected already and yeah these are extra wires if i need i'm probably going to take some out just because i don't need it that's for the sata stuff we don't need it's going to be zip tying a few stuff cleaning things up for the most part pretty cool finalizing and yeah overall pretty solid build and if you guys want to see this at night here you go all right me 
There we go. Look at that. You can see that fan is like light up, lit up. And then you see this side is pretty bright, really good RGB. Way better than my previous computer that I have right now. It doesn't have much RGB. So it's definitely an upgrade when it comes to RGB wise. Also performance wise, it, the CPU is insane. Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, that basically wraps up my video. Be sure, be sure to give a thumbs up. Much love. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Peace.